alleged 3.7 budget pardon. Senate suspends Senator Ningi for three months over 2024 budget pardon claims. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. The Nigerian Senate has on Wednesday suspended Senator Abdul Ningi for three months over allegations of 3.7 trillion Naira pardon of the 2024 budget. Before Senator Ningi's suspension, the upper legislative chamber was thrown into a chaotic session following deliberations on budget pardon allegations made by the lawmaker. Chairman of the Senate Committee on Appropriations, Solomon Olamileko, who moved the motion that led to the suspension of Senator Ningi, explained that the figure is not contained in the budget because some of the agencies are on the first line charge. However, Senator Ningi, who was given a fair hearing, argued that 3.7 trillion naira cannot be accounted for in the 2024 budget. Meanwhile, Senator Agum Jarigbe emphasized that all lawmakers are culpable in the alleged budget pardon scandal, with some receiving 500 million and others as much as 100 billion naira. This led to a rowdy session with Jarigbe's claim causing a delay of nearly 30 minutes. The two documents we have here was shared to the 109 senator of the, of the Senate. Containing this document under the volume one, paragraph two, three, and four, is the breakdown of the 28.77 trillion budget that was passed. And from paragraph seven, eight, at the breakdown of the budget, which we call the budget details of the entire MDAs. And when you add this figure together as containing this document for the entire MDAs, it comes to 25.4 trillion naira. If you have listened, all your agents have listened to the Arise interview and the Correspondent Chapel interview, I said categorically, the president powers stopped as a proposal, as he proposed the budget. And I said, there is no way the National Assembly will add anything on the budget and it becomes fudging. The tapes are there. I said the National Assemblies have powers and you cannot call that powers padding. And I said, I'm very grateful to the presidential spokesman who encountering me said the National Assembly added 1.27 trillion. And I was very clear. I was not aware of the addition. I was not even aware as I'm seated here of the full budget of the National Assembly put and back on these issues and coming up with issues of the budget and individual uh, issues concerning what came to our various constituencies. If we want to go into those issues, all of us are called people. Some senators here, so-called senior senators, got 500 million each. I am a ranking senator. I didn't get. Did I go to the press? I didn't get. Most of you got. And yes. If we want to go into those issues, excuse me, if we want to go into those issues, yes. Under Senate President Godwill, Goswill Akpabio's leadership, Senator Ningi was suspended for three months from parliament activities, while Senator Kawu received a warning. Shortly after his suspension, Senator Abdul Ningi resigned his position as the chairman of the Northern Senators Forum. Joining us, virtually. I agree that we're.
Actually, for this topic, uh, Deputy Director of Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap Kola Wale Ulu Adare, a development analyst, Festus Tokumbo, member of the Youth Parliament, Abdul Mumin ADD, and in the studio with me is a political analyst, Mr. Mayowa Alakija. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Plus Politics. Let me start with you. Uh, Mr. Lakija, what's your take of the melodrama that took place on the floor of the, on the hallowed floor of the Nigerian Senate yesterday? Thank you very much. Um, if I would say that um, we have seen lots of drama at the National Assembly, but the current one that happened two days ago since last week when Senator Abdul Ningi um, gave such um, interview um, is another terrain entirely. But just pardon is not new to the Nigerian system when it comes to the National Assembly. But um, for me, I've been following up Senator Abdul Ningi over time since 2003. He spent 12 years um, in the House of Representatives. At a point, he was the um, Deputy Majority Leader and is a, one of the high ranking senators. Second time senators. So, at that level, if you are saying anything that happened, you should do a dick stick, have an insight of what you are presenting at BBC, um, um, outside BBC. Because you don't just throw something to, you know, um, create a kind of chaos within the political system. Okay, let me, let me go to one of your colleagues uh, who are joining us, who are with us virtually. Kola Wale. How would you want to respond? What would be your initial salvo? Okay, the gentleman in, in, in the car, can we go to him? Okay, thank you for, can you, thank you for having, me, having me on your show. Okay. Uh, the fact is that you know, the Nigerian situation is becoming very worsening every day, you know. The fact is, the Nigerian parliament is one of the most expensive in the world in terms of remuneration and the cost of maintenance. In the UK, the basic salary is £2,200, while the member of the British Parliament earns about £7,100 monthly. In, in Germany, it is dollars In Nigeria, the basic salary, plus the remuneration and other security votes is, um, is, is about $40,000 monthly. Now, a country of 200 million populations over, over 200 million population with GDP of less than $5 million billion that is spending about 80% of its revenue on debt servicing should not be spending $40,000 per senators. In my own, in my own, in my own. As, as logical as your point may seem, you live in England. Have you ever gone to the door of your member of parliament to tell your member of parliament before that your your wife your wife just gave birth and he needed to give you money have you ever done that no i have not done that but you've not done that that is the culture in, that is the culture in nigeria but i mean we cannot be talking about development we cannot be talking about addressing poverty and do it in this way i have a chance to work with the british member of parliament to me in my opinion pardon is like bribery the parliament to pass the national the, the budget and for, if we are this year the budget is 27.5 trillion naira if we are if the president is spending about nine trillion three trillion dollars to bribe for a budget of 26, uh, 27 trillion which is about nine percent what that suggests to us is that 30 percent of that budget may have been manipulated I think. Well, okay, okay. Let, let me let me go to one of your colleagues and come back. Is as the other gentleman fixed his uh, audio challenge now? Hello. Yes, okay. I think I can hear you now. You can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Now, now what would be your initial response to uh, the prologue? The prologue that I read out uh, in, in introducing the show. Okay, so I don't, I could not hear you from the beginning. Maybe you should just recap. Uh, oh, 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 okay. What you said. Uh, 
what is the summary of your take of uh, the scenario that played out on the alert, on the floor of the alert chambers of the of the Nigerian Senate yesterday? Okay, so my simple take as a young person is that that was very shameful. Um, it's you know we run representative democracy in Nigeria, and the hallmark of our democracy is our parliament. And when such things come up in the parliament, is at the detriment of the integrity of the parliament. Now, the parliament is there to checkmate the executive. If the parliament then is having its integrity at stake, then honestly, what specifically? Just, just wanting to laser in on the specifics now. What specifically was shameful to you? Because, to the best of my understanding, uh, legislative chambers all over the world, because they are peopled, because they are peopled with, uh, with uh, egotistic characters, are usually, mm -hmm. usually given to fracas. So, what specifically was uh, shameful for you yesterday? So, everything about what happened, the fact that an allegation could be made about budget padding, I know we, we had this issue in 2016, but the reoccurrence of this issue is really alarming. The fact that the issue... What, is, what, is, where, what is budget padding in a liberal democracy where the legislature is constitutionally empowered to, is constitutionally empowered with the power of appropriation? What is the meaning of budget padding? Does it not seem to you that it is in itself a misuse of terminology? The ultimate, the ultimate institution that has the right to pass the appropriation bill is the legislature, the National Assembly. Yes. And they can add, the, yes. the, the so, executive so, may submit so anything. Right. Um, the thing is, the issue of the terminology budget padding depends on who is using it, right? Because ordinarily, the constitution empowers the legislature to review the budget, right? And in reviewing the budget... Review the budget or the pass the appropriation bill. Review or pass. The budget proposal comes from the executive as a proposal. Yes. A proposal is not a law. And the legislature is the embodiment yes. of the representation of all the constituencies in Nigeria. And each person representing a constituency, be it at the level of the House of Representatives or at the level of the Senate, has the powers to argue, to lobby his colleagues or our colleagues to make sure that some preferences are given to projects in his or our constituencies. So what is the definition of budget padding? Well, you see, that, that, that definition is alien to parliament, in all honesty. It's alien to parliament. I mean, I think, it, it depending, depending on who is using it and why the person is using it is where you will view it from. If the person is making use of that terminology for mischievous reasons, of course it would be mischievous to, to, to a lot of people. But given, but let, let's quickly do this before I go to one of your colleagues. Given the opportunity that was given to Ningi yesterday, and the fact that Ningi was privy, every member of the bicameral legislature, every member was privy to the deliberations and the ultimate, the ultimate approval by the two chambers of the bill that went to the president for signature. What what has Ningi proven now? Honestly, I think the old claim has been refuted by the Chairman of the um, Senate Committee on Appropriations, Honorable Olamile Solomon. You know, because he came out and he gave a breakdown on some of those things that were not detailed in the budget that he probably had. And everything from what I, the documents I could see seems like they made up for all of those things. Now, the problem with Ningi or Senator Ningi is probably that he had concerns. There were proper channels through which you could have raised and clarified your concerns. 
by walking up to the Senate leadership. But he didn't do that. He went straight to the media. And if you look at the standing orders of the, of the, of the National Assembly, there are procedures on how to address okay, this I'll come, back to, to the, I'll come back to you, sir. Uh, okay. Mr. Lakija, um, Ningi was privy to the deliberations of the passage of the bill that ultimately became the Appropriation Act 2024. He did not raise his concerns. Ningi, after even that Appropriation Act was, was signed into law, uh, had every opportunity to have, to have aired his reservations. He did not do it. He took the opportunity of BBC AUSA service that could actually instigate serious security situation to not only mouth it, but he made a claim that when given the fair airing opportunity, he could not substantiate. What would be, what would be your response to... Um, thank you very much. Um, I don't have problem as regards the platform Senator Nigi used to present his case or when or how he presented his case. But my concern is simple. When you are presenting a case, you need to fact check your points. Because um, if you look at it critically, there is no place in the appropriation bill that was sent by the presidency, where we can see 25 trillion naira. What was sent was 27.5 trillion naira. And what was approved or assented, ad, approved at the end of the day was 28.77 trillion naira. So at that point, I have a concern that as a rank, high ranking senator at the National Assembly, you should be able to present a case at its ease appropriately because what he has done is simple and it's not only the party issue that he presented when he when he when he was interviewed he also said that 2024 budget happens to be anti northern region budget that is enough to cause chaos division within the Nigerian system so that is not what we need at this right at this time the gentleman in england the gentleman in uk Okay, so sir. you may be in another part of UK. There are four, there are four nations that make up uh, United Kingdom. England yeah. being one. So I wouldn't know where you are. Um, in England. What? How, how would you? Um, looking a bit more forensically, had the facts as they seemed to have played out. How would you, would you not want to believe that this may have been, or Senator Ningi's uh, allegation may have been uh, driven by, say, the internal politics of the chamber, of the upper chamber? Of course, there may be many factors. That are that are make this need to come at this point of time to allay uh, is a is a is a is fact that the budget was bad. That was an element of padding the budget. But the fact remains that I mean, it may be probably because I mean, uh, from his accusation, some of the got higher shares of of the budget than some other part of the senator. So the fact remains that. It, I mean, it may not. It may not be doing it in the interest of the nation. It might be on the interest, on his own personal interest, or from his own locality. But one fact is clear that there is possibility that the project was padding. And what the 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 the, the, the uh, would you please enlighten? The, would you please enlighten uh, our viewers what you mean by budget padding? And we we'll then use the British Parliament from, uh, as the best example. Of okay. what a budget? What you mean by budget pardon? From from the Nigerian perspective, from what has been happened since the era of President Obasanjo, my own definition of pardon is like bribing the parliament to pass the budget. I mean, I, I, my colleague said earlier that bribing, bribing, as in 
as in please educate educators. Bribing what? as in what do you mean by bribe? Because it is the functions. I mean, when we, when the executive subject the budget to the legislature, it has to be investigated forensically to make sure that I mean those funds are well allocated to the appropriate quotas budget. It's like passing the bill without those. I mean, for state investigation. So, I mean, there are an element of lies there. I mean, it, it, the, the only way the parliament should have, I mean, protect their name, rather than suspending the senator, should have some, subject the body to forensic investigation. In the, in, the, in the Western countries, the only the ways that we, we, pass, we, we press a legislation, we pass a bill, we, we engage different actors. We can use the press, can be the, lo, be the lobby, lobby groups, the pressure groups, or the trade unions, they lobby their legislator to pass a bill. Last year, a US, I mean, a US NGO recruited me to liaise with the Nottingham member of parliament to, part, to, to, to propose a legislation that will ensure that the UK commit, may, commit to the, 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 the UN recommendation for international development. The UN recommend that this country should commit 0.7% of their GNI to international assistance. Okay, uh, before, before we go into such details, um, would you know that in the UK, mm -hmm. the executive prepares the budget, they propose yes. to parliament, and ultimately whatever parliament passes and his majesty the king signs would be the appropriation act for that year. Is that how it yes. works? That's how it works. But those those budgets must go through for a forensic investigation. What do you mean by forensic? It can be assessed. What do you mean by forensic investigation? By what I mean is that we have to we cannot tell you are allocating three trillion for uh, for uh, uh, educational sectors. I think it's still less than three trillion naira, and I think, I think he's not getting his fact uh, no, right. No, no, I, I want to follow his. He's I want to get in his fact right. I want to follow his logic. So that it will be able to help us. Maybe we are talking, the one talking about three trillion naira. <laughs> Why? Because the Nigga itself apologized <laughs> on the floor of the parliament. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm confused here. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to get our facts right. The person that actually apologized on the floor of the parliament that he was misconceived, that he never meant to, he never presented that the budget was padded. For him to appraise that allegations. Yeah. Suggest that for him to have for a senator, a member of the to have raised such an allegation, suggests that there is possibility that there is party in the budget. And this is not the first time that we have the kind of Tokumbo. I, I think yeah, you, you need Tokumbo. to understand the antecedent of Senator Tokumbo. Abu Nigi before you can speak on the let me let me follow let me follow with Tokumbo, please. Tokumbo. Yes, sir. Can you be said? Or can you be said to, to have done something wrong when you act in a position that the law empowers you to act in? Can, can, can a parliament, can a parliament be said to have padded a document that they have the prerogative to define how it, look is one thing for the budget to speak to the development that we need or developmental strategy that we need is another thing for the budget to be seemingly buccaneer as we mm. as we seem to have it but when i hear the word pardon how is it pardon when the two chambers of the National Assembly are imbued with the constitutional prerogative to determine what the president will sign into law? So what is, where is the word pardon coming in? That, that is, I have to tell you that that is why the people go into governance in Nigeria for their own private benefit. Not for not to save in the West in, in the developed country, you say when you go to public services is to save the people to serve your community. Not not for not, you are not there to save your own interest. 
And um, as far as it's only the padding, it's not a new thing in Nigeria. It has been it has been over the years since President Obama. Oh, oh, okay, uh, so, let, so let, let me. I'm coming. You, you, you seem to have been stuck. Let's give Sorry. the other. Let's give the other gentleman the opportunity to also, uh, uh, you know, make his own contribution. Uh, sir, are you still on with us? Yes, I am. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, how how would you want to? Uh, Contribute at this juncture to where we are in this. Uh... Okay, so so this is this is what I'm going to say. Uh, you know, when it comes to appropriation bill, the parliament has two functions. The executive has two function. The ex the executive has the duty to draft the appropriation bill as well as implement the appropriation bill, while the legislation has the the, the duty to approve the appropriation bill and oversee the implementation of the appropriation bill. The problem that happens most of the time is because our democracy is constructed in a way whereby legislators find themselves doing some of the duties of the executive. Now, that is where the issue of constituency allocation comes from. Several times that we have argued that constituency allocations are illegal, and we need to look into it. But can we help it? Because our people expect legislators to construct roads. They expect legislators to build houses for them, to feed them, to empower them. These are the issues. Now, this brings us to the, the situation where the, the, the legislature finds itself also trying to implement a budget that is supposed to oversee. And when issues like this come up, crises will arise because people will not trust you to want to oversee yourself. You are part of the implement, implementing body, and you also want to oversee what you are implementing. So I think this is where the, the issue of integrity okay. of the National Assembly uh, is coming me, into play. Let, let me just ask you this question before I come back to the studio. Uh, in so much as I would not want Nigeria to go in that direction or replicate that malady in the American uh, legislative system, but you must have had of a phrase in America called pork barrel, pork barrel uh, system. Have you ever heard about it? Um. Okay, pork barrel means that when the executive wants some legislators in America, either members of the House of Representatives or, the, or members of the American Senate, you know what they do? They bribe them with projects in their constituencies. Mm -hmm. Projects that they can't refuse. Maybe projects that they've been chasing for, for you know, years. And they just yes, put it there. Have you ever heard in America the American the American political system a bridge to nowhere? They have in fact a bridge was literally once built in a constituency in mm -hmm. America that ended going nowhere because they wanted to please to please. Uh, the, the representative of that constituency. That is bad enough that we should learn not to replicate it. So when I hear political analysts in Nigeria talking about budget padding, bribing, in any liberal democracy, can any one of you, does any one of you know of any liberal democracy where sometimes the executive does not pay does not play to the bait of the legislature. I'm talking of liberal democracy. I'm not talking of uh, North Korea. I'm not talking of uh, Putin's Russia. I'm not talking of quote unquote liberal democracy. Liberal when, democracies where when, parliament when, is. Can I just come up? Can I just. Let, you see, yeah, let me just quickly respond to that, right? Please, please. So it is true that this happens in parliament. Right, because the duties of the rep um, representatives is not just to oversee um, what government is doing. They also have the duty to facilitate things to their constituencies. Now, the way and manner that this is done is where the issue ar arises from. Thank you very much, right? sir. We we'll come back so, to you. Let's let's give uh, Mr. Lakija. Uh, I wouldn't know. Uh, you, you, my my brief tells me that you are a political analyst, and to be honest with you. Uh, I'm sitting there as a Nigerian, 
who was once a politician in England, actually literally contested election on the platform of the Conservative Party in England. Mm. I'm sitting there feeling when people are disillusioned about the quality of politics in their polity, mm. when people are disillusioned about how their politicians are seen to be engaging with day-to-day -day issues, everything becomes a source of a source of displeasure and allegation. <laughs> in this instance, I, I would rather it's maybe nice I would rather that people are based our politicians for not being up to par in getting us out of the mess that we are in. But when I hear budget padding, when I hear some terminologies that are seemingly, I don't know your response, but you, you seem to be one amongst the three guests who don't quite believe in the terminology budget padding. What is your take? Uh, thank you very much. Um, budget padding issue has been used since the time of Obasanjo. Then uh, we have Yaradua, the same thing occurred. We have Good Luck Jonathan, we said something about budget padding. Why he came in, we said budget padding. And now we have President Bola Mets. We are still you talking about budget at padding. The moment in, you, you yeah. forgot that the moment in, who actually, who actually <laughs> entrenched the infamy in our political le le lexico, uh, le lexicography. But my concern is this. Senator Mingi is ironically senator. If truly we have budget padding in our system, I think he's the right person to iron that out, to make Nigeria to know that truly we have budget padding within our political system. Well, yesterday, I apologize. Unfortunately, it was mentioning 25 trillion as against 27.5 trillion and 28.77 um, trillion was approved. And Senator Ola Mine Kwadiola was able to come on board and explain why they even added 1.2 trillion on the in the budget. So I felt disappointed. So in this point we are discussing now is not either there is budget padding or there is budget padding. I felt disappointed because Senator Abdulini should have been able to convince sure. Nigerians. Ningi uh, should have been able to convince Nigerians that truly we have budget padding. And because I think oh, what we have on ground is not political. I, I think, I, I think uh, it's imperative at this juncture that I mentioned that out there in the social media sphere, Ningi is winning. And the reason why Ningi is winning is that, you see, Nigerians are generally disillusioned with how our representatives are representing us. So anybody who is a naysayer will naturally be playing to the, to the gallery. To the gallery. To the gallery. Uh, Tokumbo. Um, Tokumbo in the UK. Yes. I can hear uh, you, sir. Uh, at this juncture, what would be what would be your contribution thus far? Or are you still obstinately old, holding on to your to your belief in the existence? Of the you know, of the phrase budget padding, yes, uh, we can't really that uh, the, the budget of the padding is uh, very as my friend has said. The fact is that you no, know, since Pendebura uh, uh, Tinubu became the president, he has promised to do things differently from his predecessor. He should match his actions with with his word, because the biggest problem we have in Nigeria is corruption, and if you must get it right. If you must address poverty, it must stimulate economic growth. We need a solution that works as far as long as corruption is concerned. At the moment, we have no solution to address corruption. We have no solution. About, I think about a week ago, the first lady went to a state in the north and said the kidnappers should face death penalty. I believe that not just the kidnappers, even the corrupt politicians should face death penalty because if you, want, if you don't stimulate capital punishment for corruption, we're not going to get it right. And we need to address corruption. Because corruption, if we address our corruption, we address about 80% of Nigerian problems. We're going to address banditry, kidnapping, internet insecurity, high inflation, high interest rate, everything. So we need a solution that works as far as corruption is concerned. That's the main problem that we have to find 
to to get it right in Nigeria. Which, which, that, of, you, which of you gentlemen represent Serap here? Is the Serap is the Serap? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 because my next question, ordinarily, let me go to, uh, I, I guess, uh, Abdul Mumun and Edidi. Yes, yes. yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, I, I guess, okay, you are a youth leader, Nigerian, you are, you, are, you are the representative, you are a member of the Nigerian Youth Parliament, Abi? Yes, I am. Fantastic. Uh, let me allege, let me play the role of Ningi in this instance. Would it not be the fact that civil society organizations in themselves fail in holding parliamentarians to account during a period as important as when the, the deliberations on the passage of the budget is going on that has brought us to this point? Because what budget is now doing, itemizing some of the most ridiculous allocations in the Estant Appropriation Act 2024, they could have done it when the appropriation bill was still in, in deliberations, where billions are allocated to, to, for the building of a, an Anglican church hall, where uh, billions are allocated to uh, one school, one in Noko school, not even, not Amodubele University, not University of Ibadan, not Unsuka, not one in Noko Federal College of uh, Education Technica, billion for her. It, does that not speak to the fact that even those in the CSO community in Nigeria just like to play to the gallery when issues like this happen, not, they are not even holding our political class to account. How would you respond to that? Yes, um, you, you may be right because you know, I agree the media, including uh, the media, including my constituency. Because if we, the two of us, if the two, if the two uh, constituencies have done our, our jobs right, it will not take either the genuine motivation or the mischievous motivation of a Ningi that will now make us to be retroactively be forensically examining yes. a document that is slapping us because even as a Nigerian I feel insulted with this body. Yes, yes. So so the, the thing is this, right? The fact that we are even having this conversation is good for us as a nation because I mean better late than never, yes. In, in some places these conversations will not even come up. Right, so we are evolving democracy, and I hope I know that very soon we will get there. Now, the civil society groups sometimes, when notices are put out for a public hearing in the National Assembly, we do not know, we do not have an account of how many of the civil society groups actually go there. What are their contributions? What what are the feedbacks? How do they follow up on some of these issues? The civil society groups owe Nigerians a responsibility of giving us accurate information when they, whenever they have the opportunity to interact with these um, stakeholders. My parliament is not a civil society group. We actually are under the National Assembly, but we also contribute to some of these things. So um, I think we all need to do better as Nigerians. As so Senator, are you trying to play, are you trying to play Senator, are you trying to play Senator, what's his name for me now? I was not there. You know, that, that's what I do. That's what I see you doing now. Okay, no, no, I get no, back no. to you. What I said is that my parliament also has a duty in this. As a matter of fact, the public hearing that was held in relation in relation to the uh, constitution review, we were there and we we're there, ready to make contributions to how the constitution should be reviewed. Some of the things that needs to be looked into. So what I'm saying is we all have a duty to the people of this country because everybody cannot be there. You know, parliamentarians or legislators are privileged people. They have access to privileged information which ordinary Nigerians do not have access to. So it is the duty of the civil society groups and all other pressure groups to extract this information from these persons and make it available to the average Nigerian. Now, we must be constructive in all of these things because we know we are just coming out of a very keenly contested election. 
and the, the, the country is still very fragile. Um, there's hunger in the land, there's a lot of pressure. So we need to be very careful. And what Senator Nigi did, um, for me, I think it's not right because there are proper channels of resolving these issues. The issue is sensitive. If we had these oh, concerns, okay. they are willing I, I, to I'll come back to it. I'll come back to not you. trying to save the nation at least. I'll come back to you. You, uh, the uh, Mr. Edidi seems to be agreeing with you that uh, maybe Ningi overplayed his hand or was not circumspect enough in the way he managed, uh, he managed the information or the disgruntlement he felt he had with uh, this. Now, would you, uh, or maybe, just maybe, uh, you know, it could have been a fopo, or could it have ultimately helped us all? to be a bit more vigilant with, with how the budget processes are articulated? I think it could have helped us if um, Senator Nigin had done the needful, if what he presented during the interview is substantiated. However, the point is that what he did is more politically driven and personal interest driven than the, for the interests of all Nigerians. Because if you look at it critically, and um, many senators have commented, many analysts have said one thing or the other, and you look at whatever that is happening at the National Assembly, so everything has also been regionalized. As of yesterday, one of the senators, Senator um, Bamidele, Okoyin Bamidele, made mention that, look, from 1999 days, the Senate presidency have always been in the northern region more than the southern region. But anytime we have the southern senators, it's one impeachment to the other. And I also felt that Senator Nige was more personal against the Senate president. Because um, 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 appropriation bill is passed by the National Assembly, not by the Senate president. So when you are mentioning, you attend an interview, you are mentioning the name of the Senate president, president, president and you are mentioning the name of the president. So it's more or less like you are fighting with the presidency and the Senate president, not the, for the interests of the general Nigerian. And you will also know that the social media is another platform that we cannot rule out in our system. What social media pitch? Social media is there. They exaggerate across board. So is, even if it is, it can, be, it can be substantiated or not, once they felt that oh. this thing is anti the government of the day, they drive it massively. So I, 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 we have to not have only to not only careful. Not, not only anti the government of the day once it's an anti-establishment because you know what you know, I, I, have, I have serious concern I have serious uh, concern because people are is is just natural in any polity when majority of the citizenry of a country or uh, of a polity when they are disgruntled. There is transferred aggression across all issues. Uh, and it's not peculiar to Nigeria. Nigerians are feeling hard done by. So if anybody is in leadership now, they will lambast a lot of you if you <laughs> drop the ball. So, uh, Tokumbo, uh, let me give you the opportunity to uh, enrich uh, today's uh, episode of Plus Politics with your, prologue, uh, with your epilogue. How do you want to sign out? So, uh, what I want to say is that President Putin should try to do things differently because he's claiming that he's going to follow the path of his predecessor. He should, he should show it by action. Me, uh, we are in a terrible economic situation that we can't afford this kind of things, pardon, corruption, public stealing. We can't afford it anymore. Nigeria cannot wait. We, we, we need a solution that works. We, we, we need to manage our economy very prudently financially it's not i mean the, the common weight the, the common people will benefit from the common weight we, i mean our currency is crashing every day the only the only part is going up everything is collapsing we can't afford this we need to do it differently we need we should not be following the business as usual model that will be followed over the year we need radical approach to things we need to i mean we when every arms of the nigerian government nigerian sector need reform we need structural reform the judicial sectors in the executive sector and, and uh, i am uh, in the legislative sector i know in the uh, executive things are going gradually but governor is not just about the executive we need to talk think about the judiciary as well two years ago i was a student at a nigerian international affairs in lagos where we have the 
the Minister of uh, Minister of Defense come to make some presentation and was appealing to the public that the judiciary are not working where they arrest Boko Haram. I mean, and over to the court, they are not being prosecuted for mispresentation. Only about 15 uh, people uh, of those uh, arrested uh, were Tokumbo. prosecuted. Tokumbo, huh? you live you live in a society that that can that could be said to relatively work when when members of the executive come out to lambaste judicial officers, you must be very reticent to accept whatever they say, Ukraine and Sinka, because the prosecution of criminals start, or accused persons, starts with the executive. You have in the UK, as we have in Nigeria, a department called Department of Public Prosecution. It is when they have gathered evidences and when they file a tidy case that a judge, having listened to the prosecution and the defense, will give a ruling. Don't let people be playing to the diary when you are in front of them. That is why some of the things you say, I share your sentiments, but I still need to be speaking to constitutional facts as they are and as they operate in most liberal democracies. Uh, there will be some other time, uh, my brother. Uh, ADD, I cannot but sign up with you by letting you respond to the fact that you are a member of the Nigerian Youth Parliament, and I know you occasionally have opportunities to obnub with members of the substantive parliament. What do you guys even tell them about the feelings of people out there, especially youths like, your, like yourself? Well, so we work with every arm of government, both the executive and the legislature. The important thing for us is to let them know where it pinches our youth and the people at large. And we do this from time to time. You know, just today in Lagos, um, the discussion about the open market um, projects that the Lagos State Government is doing, we sent in some youth representatives to join the projects so that the, the opportunities can also reach out to the young people. Now, we do this from time to time. However, I would like to appeal to our people and to our leaders at large. You know, our people need to learn to understand the difference between all these harms of government. So long as we keep reaching out to legislators to, to, to execute projects, to do empowerment, we would keep having issues like budget padding. We would keep having it. Now, to the leaders and to the, to the, to the, also, to the National Assembly in particular, they need to rebrand the image of the National Assembly. This is not good for our democracy, I must tell you. Because the whole uh, essence and the whole on that, on and that image advice, of parliament on that of advice democracy note, is parliament. Mr. Didi, on that advisory note, uh, let's just say thank you uh, for having added value to, to the program today. How would you want to sign out, uh, Mr. Lakija? Um, what I would say is simple. Um, I want to charge the civil society to do more. Because um, what we are doing now is messing up our debt. If um, civil society can stand up to their responsibility and get themselves more involved in the process of um, the appropriation process, I think some of these things should have been pointed out. We have been saying it close to 20 years, if not more than 20 years. Well, my concern is that we have not been able to substantiate anything so far. Because if a senator that said that this happened at the floor of the house is at the, at the end of his apologizing that he didn't make to say that. So we need to do more so that we won't come here 2025 and say that budgets, the budget has been padded or not. So it's all, it's our collective responsibility. We want a better Nigeria. We want better things. To, and I also want to tie the, um, the National Assembly to do more because um, their responsibility is to um, checkmate the activities of the um, executive. So, Thank you very much. all do more and ensure that we have a better Nigeria. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mr. Lakija. Thank you. Good to have you, especially you uh, live in our studios uh, in VI, Victoria Island, Lagos. Uh, that is where we wrap it up for today. We really want to say thank you to all of you watching at home. Uh, we hope uh, in some respects you, your day has been edified. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening.